All right, so today I want to show you how to make a purple ball python. There's actually several different ways you can make one. There's actually a ball python with purple in the name, the Purple Passion. There's some that are really bright purple. Some of them are kind of a faded out lavender purple. Some of them actually start kind of a purplish color when they're young and the purple color fades as they age and mature. Some of them start out with no purple at all and as they age, they actually increase the amount of purple in the ball python. So today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you several different ways that you can make a purple ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna start with probably the number one combination that you would think of if you're thinking about a purple ball python and that is the purple passion. This is what a purple passion looks like and it's kind of an interesting combination. It actually consists of two genes, the phantom and the Mojave and both the phantom and the Mojave are in the blue-eyed leucistic complex and usually when you think of a blue-eyed leucistic, you're thinking of an all-white snake with blue eyes but in this case, you're actually getting two genes in the blue-eyed leucistic that come together to form kind of a purplish colored snake which is pretty interesting sometimes they can be kind of a lavender color and sometimes like in this case it can be kind of a metallic sheen to the purple passions they can be pretty variable and you can actually make another purple snake instead of using the phantom and the Mojave you can use two copies of the phantom take a look at this this is kind of interesting this is the super phantom kind of a purplish colored kind of a, like like a lavender purple purplish colored snake which is kind of interesting almost has like a blue sheen to it and if you actually make a super Mojave you actually get an all white snake with blue eyes and if you're wondering if your genes are actually in the blue eyed leucistic especially if you're looking at some of the supers or the combinations you think you know just looking at the phantom it kind of confused me when I first got into ball pythons I was like all right the super phantom is not an all white snake and I mix it with Mojave and it's not an all white snake I wonder if it's actually in the blue eyed leucistic and one way you can test your genes is to actually look at the combination between that gene and lesser. Lesser and pretty much any gene in the blue-eyed leucistic complex will always make an all-white snake with blue eyes. So this is what happens if you actually take phantom and work it in with the lesser, you get the karma, which is an all-white snake with blue eyes, indicating that yes, the phantom is in the blue-eyed leucistic because you can actually mix it with lesser and get an all-white snake. You can do the same thing with Mojave. Over here I actually pulled up a lesser Mojave and sure enough this is what you would typically consider to be a blue-eyed leucistic, an all-white snake with blue eyes. So here's another one with the, this is actually the Mystic Potion, the combination of the Mystic and the Mojave. The Mystic is also in the blue eyed leucistic, and when mixed with the Mojave, it makes kind of a purplish colored snake. This one has a little bit more purple, maybe a little less blue than some of the, the combinations. You can actually go one step further and use two copies of the Mystic and get the Super Mystic and take a look at this. This is kind of a, a really light purplish colored snake, a little bit more purples in this one than in the Super Phantom. And if you actually test this one against the Lesser to see if it's actually in the Blue Eyed Leucistic, you can actually pull up the Lesser Mystic and sure enough it's an all white snake with blue eyes. Kind of the easy way to figure out if a certain gene is in the Blue Eyed Leucistic complex. So here's another one. This is the banana. And sometimes the bananas can have a lot of purple in the background of the color. Sometimes they can be more or less purple. Sometimes it's, it's almost like a lavender purple color, especially when they're hatchlings. And I've actually seen bananas even with even more purple if you have two copies of the banana. Probably the purplest ones. I actually pulled one up over here. Take a look at this one. This one is really crazy. This is the super banana clown with two copies of the banana. And sometimes can really glow really super bright purple kind of this like lavender purple color as hatchlings and kind of the one the, the kind of the issue with the the purple color of the super bananas or the bananas is they'll actually fade into more of a two-toned yellow with a lot of freckles as they age and mature a lot of your bananas will actually have a lot of oranges and purples as hatchlings and I actually pulled up a juvenile banana over here take a look at this this is essentially what happens to your purple banana as it gets a little bit 
bit of age on it. It pretty much loses all the purple. Sometimes you'll see a little bit in the background. It usually turns a little bit darker, but a lot of times it'll actually turn into more of a two-tone yellow color. And a lot of times it'll actually get these little freckles all over the thing. So it's pretty amazing with the, the bananas and the super bananas, you'll actually see quite a bit of variability from the hatchlings to an adult. A lot of times it'll actually lose a lot of the purple color. So these are the one that's pretty interesting. This one actually starts out with no purple at all. And as it ages and matures, it actually increases the amount of purple in the snake. This is actually just a lavender albino. It's a simple recessive gene with two copies of the lavender albino. And essentially when these are hatchlings, they start out pretty much looking exactly like a regular albino with a really stark white background. And as it ages and matures, take a look at this. I actually pulled up an adult over here and look at how the back background changes from the really stark white to kind of a purplish background which is pretty interesting some of them can be pretty bright purple in some of these older lavender albinos so here's the last one I wanted to show you. This one's pretty interesting. This one is actually a leopard anchi ivory, which is an interesting combination. I'd say out of probably all the purple snakes, this one is probably the brightest purple that I've seen in ball pythons. And essentially what this is, this is actually an ivory, which is a super yellow belly. So if you're familiar with the ivories, most of the ivories are actually a completely white snake, which is pretty interesting. And as far as I know, there's really only one gene that can break through the ivory and that is the leopard kind of interesting that the leopard works with the ivory to actually break through the white snake and bring a lot of the pattern through and kind of the interesting thing between the leopard and the ivory it seems like when the leopard breaks through a lot of times it'll bring through a lot of purples with the leopard and the other thing I found really interesting about the leopard ivories is a lot of times if you actually work other genes into a leopard ivory, it'll actually bring those genes out as well. You can actually see an influence, especially in the pattern of a lot of your other genes. So in this case, you actually have Anchi in the mix. And kind of the interesting thing too, is I've seen, sometimes you'll see Anchi kind of breaking through the ivory probably to a lesser degree than you'll actually see the leopard. But if you actually combine them both in the same snake, the leopard and the anchi, you really get a lot of pattern and you get a lot of the purple color coming through the leopard anchi ivory. All right, so what is time for the question of the day? And Nicholas DuPont asks, I have a 0.1 banana Mojave head ghost and the mom was a banana. Is my snake a female maker? And that is a very good question. Now let me tell you when it comes to female makers and male makers and bananas, it can get really confusing. And first we should actually start with the 0.1. That's kind of like the secret code for ball python breeders. A lot of times you'll actually walk up to display cases in the reptile shows, you'll see either a 0.1 or a 1.0. And if you're not familiar with that, Essentially what that is, the first number is for males, the second number is for females. So if you have a 0.1, that means you have a female. If you have a 1.0, that means that you have a male. And sometimes you'll actually go over to morphmarket.com and you'll actually search for some snakes. And for example, you'll actually see a Mojave listed as a 2.3, meaning they actually have two males and three female Mojaves listed for sale in one single ad. So I can get a little bit <laughs> so if you actually have a 0.1, that means you have a female banana. And that banana actually came from a female. So it gets a little bit confusing. If you actually think about the male makers and the female makers, from what I've heard, as far as my understanding of the gene, only the males can be male makers or female makers. So if your snake actually came from a female and it's a female, essentially what that is, is your female is not a male maker or a female maker. It'll actually act just pretty much like the rest of the females it'll produce half male and half female bananas and it won't really you know favor one or the other I actually have a male maker coral glow and I've been breeding that year after year for quite a few years I produce dozens and dozens of coral glows and when I breed it to something else half the offspring come out as coral glows and every single coral glow is always a male which is really frustrating actually I was hoping to get a female this year and every single one was a male 
again, so they say that your odds can be like one in a hundred that you can actually get a female from a male maker, but so far over quite a few years of breeding and dozens of offspring, I have not produced a single female coral glow. And a lot of people think that the coral glows and the bananas are pretty much the same. So I'd say as far as your question, if you actually have a female that came from a female, that female is not a male maker or a female maker. It's only associated with the males. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.